Uh, so this class is called Multidimensional Essentials. And over the next few hours, we're going to establish the foundations for a multidimensional worldview. Uh, my hope is that by the time we're done, you will have a clear understanding of what it means to be a multidimensional human, very practical, it's something very specific. Um, you will have access to a coherent creation story and a system of universal pattern recognition, which might just alter the way you perceive reality if you let it. Uh, and you will have have the information which is prerequisite to all the practical applications which arise naturally in the wake of these discoveries and which are the subject of other courses and classes which uh, are available elsewhere at other times. Uh, so this class consists of the theory which informs a collection of practices which contain the potential to enhance your sense of personal peace, joy, and freedom. Uh, accelerate your evolutionary process and set you free to play the human game in a good way as you so choose. So uh, if that sounds good, let's begin by defining some of our terms here. Um, so this is a masterclass in metaphysics, so I claim. Uh, but what on earth is metaphysics? Anyway, does, does anybody have a, a definition for metaphysics? What, what does that mean, mean to you? Beyond the traditional view of like the space time, something, something transcendent beyond the traditional view of, of space time. Yeah. It looks like there's like a, a personalness to it. Hmm. Where it's like physics seems like it's just happening. Metaphysics feels like I have more of a part to play in that. Oh, you've or got my, more of a part to play. My spirit does, or my uh, awareness. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, so it's rooted in rooted in your awareness as opposed to physics, which is like, well, cool, the car is moving this fast and that that sort of thing. Sort Something of more like more that. objective. Okay, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Any anyone on on Zoom have have Something to, to contribute there? Hillary says the way things work in a micro and macrocosmic way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I love, I love all those definitions. That, that all feels really, really true. And so I'll share what Buckminster Fuller says. Buckminster Fuller is one of our primary reference points for this work. He is a total genius. And I encourage everybody to study as much of his work as possible. And so he says that the concept of imperfection can only be held relative to the mind's grasp of theoretical perfection. Okay, so we can only see that you know the earth is not a perfect sphere because we can imagine a perfect sphere. And even with our best machinery and tooling, we can't actually create a perfectly perfect sphere, but we can imagine one. So in other words, pulsative asymmetries, and we're gonna, we're gonna come back to that, that, that phrase, pulsative asymmetries require a frame of reference in order to be defined. Time is responsible for the, these asymmetries. If you separate time out of the picture, you are left with the absolute perfection of timelessness. Absolute equilibrium exists sub time or meta time outside of time. The passage of the shortest instant of time will reveal pulsative asymmetries. So outside of time, we can imagine a perfect sphere. The moment any time passes, it's gonna wobble and become imperfect. Metaphysical mind has an all important need for timeless models through which to understand universe. So this, this is our, our understanding of, of what metaphysics is. It is the abstract conceptual models upon which observable reality is based but can never actually exist themselves. They are the, it's a very similar concept to archetypes, right? Where you know, mythological stories are full of archetypes 
which are somehow more true than historical characters, even if the mythological mythological character never actually existed, right? And and so so this is this this interplay uh, where um, metaphysics relates to physics the way mythology relates to historical fact. And so we, we can see the difference where the metaphysics provides this architecture, this subtle structure that is there, but, but invisible, not actually tangible. And within that creation, which flows through time and space and has matter and physical properties exists. And, and, but it's a little bit messy when it actually gets expressed. And so we see like with crystals, for example, you can see these very beautiful uh, archetypal geometries encoded in the crystal. And yet each individual crystal is a little bit messy, isn't it? It's not quite a perfect uh, hexagon or pyramid or anything like that. It's, it's a little bit off. So, so that's our, our reference point for, for what metaphysics is. Making sense to everyone? Yeah? Um, yeah, metaphysics provides the invisible superstructure within which all of observable existence arises.